Hello, everybody. How is it going? Sorry, we're um, a minute behind. Um, but I was just telling Elise that I'm just like rushing to get here. So, um, hello, my bookish friends. I um, see a few people are here. How are you doing, Elise? Pretty good. I am yeah. definitely looking forward to at least the um, sprints portion. I mean, obviously looking forward to the discussion as well, but I had quite yeah. a day at work, so I'm looking forward to reading. <laughs> oh, I, me too. Uh, were you just going, going, going? Oh, super busy? Yeah, Mondays are usually pretty hectic. So. Yeah, same for me. I, I'm a very, like, needs, I need everything organized at the beginning of the week so my the rest of my week goes smoothly yeah. and so that's kind of what i was doing today i'm still doing it um i forgot that i was a little hour early instead of usually <laughs> i usually do it five so i was like in the middle of cutting fabric and doing all these things and i looked at the time and it was like 15 till and i was like okay Rachel, so let's get going <laughs> um but yeah i know today i you know i've had this big launch and so i'm mm -hmm. kind of like trying to get as organized as possible so I can be very um, efficient. <laughs> so I saw um, this is like the biggest launch. Yeah, yeah. Ever. That's oh, so exciting. It's crazy. I mean, summer ween, I've always, I've done summer ween the past mm -hmm. three years and that has been like the closest it's gotten to. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is, it's, it's so exciting. And the crazy thing about it is, is that Desi, um, if you guys don't know, I'm doing a Darlene Desi collection with the amazing Desi from Darlene Desi. And she hasn't even posted her video yet because um, we were waiting for the fabric to come in. So, and then I prioritized her, her stuff over to her and it still didn't get there in time. And so poor thing like was like rushing to film it for her book haul that's coming out. So we're probably gonna get another rush of orders oh. when she, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's going to be crazy. So I'm so happy. I'm like, this is just such a, a great thing. So if you guys are interested in it, um, I, I can bring the sleeves in here later, but we do have a fun collection that um, is probably one of my favorite collections I've ever done in my life. <laughs> yeah, I thank you. Swan one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the swan is so pretty in real life. Like when I, I was like gasping when I was cutting the fabric, I'm like, this is so pretty. <laughs> so yeah. So anyways, but um, yeah, I'm excited to sit and chat. I um, I know both of us, if you guys are new or if you don't know, um, the book club book is No One Can Know. And we're going to do two reading sprints. We'll do some long ones. Um, so we can get a lot of reading in tonight, but at the, 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 after the second sprint, we'll do a short discussion because Elise and I, <laughs> we read this early and Elise, I know had it from the library, so she doesn't have her copy, but I don't, I have fibromyalgia brain. I don't remember a lot of things. Like I could read a thriller for the th first time, like 10 times. I'd be like, Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> So um, y'all in the in the um, chat are definitely going to have to help us with the discussion. I'm going to refresh myself um, on the sprints, but um, we'll talk about that later. But if you guys are reading this, let us know if you're finishing it up. If you have finished it, um, let us know. If not, let us know what else you're reading. What are you reading? So I am reading And Then There Was Silence by, I think, Ooh. Candace. Candace Robinson. Yeah. Um, it's actually the March pick for the Midnight Society Book Club. And they read, nice. I think, mostly horror. And that's what it is. It's a horror. I started it, I think, yesterday. Uh, it's pretty intense. I, I feel like I've, I know that that cover. I'm going to look it up really quick. Um, is That's um, Elizabeth's yep. um, from Reading Riley. Okay. 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 Yep. I am yes. co-hosting with her this month with Beth Morvan. So the three of us are oh. having a discussion on Saturday, the 30th for it. You have a lot of stuff going on this month, huh? I oh yeah. Cause I saw, I saw your book, um, your TBR mm -hmm. video and I was like, dang girl, you're a <laughs> hot commodity today or this month at least. <laughs> oh, that's amazing though. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why is it not coming up? It's not very popular. Like there's, I think, I mean, oh. it did just come out like in February, I think. 
but there's oh. only like 45 ratings. Like not many people have gotten their hands on it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, it's the one with the moth on that cover. Yep. yep. This one. Yes. <laughs> and it's intense. Yeah, it's it's pretty dark. It's so far mm -hmm. it sounds like grief horror. Ooh. Okay. So, yeah. That's but, intense. Yeah. yeah. There's. I was reading it actually last night before bed, and they kind of alluded to potentially like a paranormal type aspect. Okay. And nice. I, I'm completely alone this week. My fiance is in Arizona. Oh no. <laughs> are on spring break, but they're with their dad this week. So I'm playing oh. it. And I'm like, um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. Okay. Well, at least you're, we're here with you. We're here with yeah. you right now. So you're good. If you need to like go tomorrow to like a coffee shop in the middle of the day or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh I you know what I love horror but like I have to read it during the day like yeah. they're just like I have to read it while I'm working and my husband's around and the kids are around and I'm just like happy because yeah. otherwise I'll just like really truly uh be terrified so cool <laughs> I've never um read anything from Candace Robinson either so interesting yeah I've never heard of her and um, Elizabeth finds like the best books. Like she's oh always finding like the coolest books. I would love to collab with her one day because we have a lot of similar tastes in yeah. stuff. Yeah, definitely. So that'd be awesome. I'd love to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We always. I feel like we're always reading the same stuff. Like she and I both love um, like commentary, social mm -hmm. commentary horror or thrillers. That's one of my favorite subgenres. So yeah, um, I we should definitely. She's she's put me on to like a bunch of different people. So anyways, while I'm reading, I need to put it on my little thing. I'm reading Kill For Me, Kill For You by okay. Steve Kavanaugh. Did you know he wrote that one called 13, which is about the jury serial killer or something? Mm -mm. He's, okay, so there's like 13, I guess it's because there's 13 people on the jury. And he, I guess apparently the serial killer is on the jury or something for the trial. Oh. So, and I was like, I know this name and I looked it up and I'm like, I want to read that one too. This one's great. This is one that? is okay. But triggers, triggers, triggers. <laughs> like, um, it's about a lot of young women that, and the serial killer. And it's just really hard to read. Like I would not recommend it to moms that it bothers them about children being hurt, but it's kind of like um, strangers on a train synopsis mm. where I think they're going to swap to like two women are going to swap um, murders and they're mm. going to murder the person for the other person. So yeah, it's intense. It's pretty intense. Um, yeah. They, they're not holding any punches. And so I'm excited to read what, um, yeah, it says she will c kill your worst enemy. All you have to do is kill hers. So yeah, I'm only like a, maybe a third in maybe. So they haven't done any murders yet, so. <laughs> but it started off where she was trying, she was attempting to, and she got caught. So she can't, she needs Ooh. somebody else to do it. So anyways, um, but let's say hello to everybody and then we'll hop in to a quick sprint. Um, so we can get a lot of reading done tonight. Hello, Shauna. How are you? Do you need something, baby? Okay. Sorry, my child. She's got um, allergies. Oh. Yeah. It's been one of those spring, like spring fever kind of allergies. It's just yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not fun at all. It's so not fun, allergies. I love spring, but I don't like my allergies. Mm -hmm. Finished the, last, the book last week and enjoyed it. Okay, Shauna, we need your um, brain to remember. Your memory, please. <laughs> Hello, Heather. Popping in to say hi before my shower. The men are joining Sharif for a while. I'm starting Mask of Mirrors. Oh, that's a fantasy. I can see the picture. I can see the, the cover. It's just like a that mask. Yeah, cool. Um, I'm excited for you. I've been intrigued by that one. So I'm glad you're here. She's had some really good reads this month. I just saw her like March reads and it's like all these amazing fantasies. I'm like, oh. I know. Fantasies are, fantasies are just like blowing up. I mean, everybody always reads fantasy, but like, it's just, we've been finding some good ones lately. Yeah. So, and I, I love that a lot of them are like under the radar ones that you mm -hmm. like are being found now. It's not just Akatar. It's not just... <laughs> I mean, I love Sarah, but you know, it's other ones too. I'm reading the Glow of the Everflame right now. Oh, it's so good. It's really, really, really good. So 
Um, and it's so funny that Desi and I unofficially started buddy reading it. She was reading it. I was reading it. We didn't even know. And then she was like, hey, I'm in the middle of book two, too. And I was like, OK, that's crazy because she didn't. Yeah, we heard it from different people about it from different people because it's like an under the it's like a Kindle Unlimited series. Oh, okay. And yeah. And so I hadn't heard. Fr- I heard, heard about it from Rachel over at Raven Hair Reads. I don't know if you follow yeah. her. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. About it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Elizabeth's like, I need to read it, too. So we're all reading it now. So. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, and I'm listening to, or I'm physically reading that one. So this one is, I'm listening to an audio. And I got to read my thriller tonight. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> Hello, Liz. Excited to discuss the book. book. I listened to it at the beginning of the month. So I'll definitely need a refresher on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, we can we can just kind of give our feelings. And if anything stood out, we don't have to do a big, big discussion. It's just fun to read with friends, you know. Didn't get around to it, but waiting for the upcoming thriller weekend yes that is going to be in place of april's pick we're just gonna do a uh, -a readathon my birthday is april 7th and last year i did flower a thon which was so fun (laughs) and we just read books with flowers on the cover all weekend this year we're doing taylor swift readathon for thrillers so um i have put all of the I made a highlight on my Instagram. So if you guys want to get all of the graphics and pick your TBRs, Elise, are you um, participating at all? I am planning on it. And okay. I know I'm <laughs> sprinting with you on that Friday. I yes. haven't put out TBR stuff though yet. <laughs> yeah. I, I have like, I have like eight on my TBR and I'm like, well, you only have four days or it's like a four day weekend mm-hmm. readathon. So it's going to go um, Thursday through, oh no, Thursday through Monday. Fourth through seventh. No, Thursday through Sunday. Okay. Thursday through Sunday. So it's a four day readathon. So we have four prompts. One is just a new release. If you guys want to um, read anything. And I have a bunch of recommendations in my, on my Instagram. One is my other favorite trope, which is isolation or, you know, people, you know, people in isolation where you can't really get out away from each other, like um, whodunit kind of thing. Um, And then, in theme of no body, no crime, the other prompt is good for her or revenge, just mm-hmm. like the song, Taylor Swift song, <laughs> which is one of my favorite songs by her. Um, and then what was the other one? Oh, your favorite trope, whatever your favorite trope is in thrillers. Um, yeah, so that's going to be super fun. We're going to do two sprints. I've in, I've asked a bunch of friends to join me. Elise will be there with me. Um, so that's going to be super fun. Um, I just love, I don't know, I, every year for my birthday, I'm just like, let's just hang out together and like do whatever. So yeah, it's going to be super, super fun. I think my, I think sprints are going to be Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. I, my brain is all over the place trying to remember everything. So <laughs> I know your sweatshirt is in reference to a book. This is actually Taylor Swift. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually from the last great American dynasty off of folklore. Um, she mm-hmm. buys a house in Rhode Island called, Ho- and she names it Holiday House oh, um, cool. in the in the song. So, and I actually was watching the Eras tour last night while I was cutting my daughter's hair, and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to wear my shirt, the magic. So, I bought this off of Amazon. So, if you're looking for, if you like Evermore, or no, it's not Evermore, it's folklore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Half of my wardrobe is either bookish or Taylor Swift or Harry Styles. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, the best. Yeah. It's not like I go out anywhere where I need to like be fancy. I'm always at home cutting and sewing. So it's fine. Yeah. I'll be putting an order in a payday. <laughs> you guys are so great. The fl- swans and the purple florals. That purple floral is so beautiful. I love it so much. I'll bring them over here and show anybody who hasn't seen them. They're so good. I love it. So if you guys want to order, order by the 31st. Um, I have to cut off a pre-order day. Like I have to, but we might do a second pre-order if mm-hmm. there's enough um, demand or whatever. So thank you so much. So excited for them. I got two of them. I can not really tell I'm going to use them all, all the time in summer. Yeah. They're so pretty. Like I, I'm keeping one of each for myself. So, which I don't usually do. So I love them. I finished looking out and now I'm reading a fate inked and blood. Oh yeah. Everybody's reading that one too. You'll have to let us know how you're liking that one. Um, and we'll get around to everybody's thoughts about the buddy read soon. This was my first adult book by Kate Alice Marshall I'm going to read before we were innocent tonight. Oh, that's an interesting cover. I've been intrigued by that one. Um, you'll have to let us know if you like that one. Um, yeah. 
That one seems super good. Hello, Julie. Just got home from the gym. Nice. Way to go. Hello. How are you? Finished the book, but it's towards the beginning of the month. So hopefully the details will come back. Yeah, same. Yeah. I know who I know who I hated in the book, and that's pretty much mostly what I remember. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna re I'm gonna go through and like pull out the characters' names and get some questions going. So we'll we'll do fine. Hello, reading Adelaide. Interesting. I know that was like on Jan's favorite book of the year last year. Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard it's kind of hard to read though. Like it's sad, right? Yeah, it's cried a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, she told me like, heck no girl, you don't want to read that one. I was like, okay, I got you. She knows the, what I can't read. So that's good. But I hope you enjoy that, Tammy. Um, hopefully you're not going through it <laughs> with it. <laughs> Heather finished. Oh, you did not. Oh my gosh. When the moon hatched, it was life changing. Uh, yeah. Rachel um, from Raven haired reads that that was so good, mm -hmm. but she said it was dense. So how did you read like Heather? Did you read it just physically? Was that like a fast read or was it slow? Let us know. Um, but a life changing read. Oh my gosh. Tell me more. Um, and Heather, I saw, that you got the book. So I'm really excited for you to start the Everflame series. It's just a fun time. And I really like the main character. She kind of reminds me of Bryce from Crescent City, where she just like doesn't give a crap and she doesn't take anything from anybody. And Bryce is one of my favorite characters. So that's why I like the main character in Sparkly Everflame. So yeah, I'm excited. But I need to know, know more about when the moon hatch, like everything, you know? Hello, I'll be reading Forget Me Not. I think isn't that a um, the romance? I think so. Is that Julie Soto? Julie Soto? I think that's who it is. Um, I love that for you. Adelaide is on my TBR. Also, has been for a while. Don't know anyone who's read it yet. Okay, Jan from Jan Agaton. She raved about it last year, so you could definitely go um, check that out. Oh, it's about a toxic relationship. Okay. Shh. Okay. Interesting. I heard there's a lot of like depression in it too. So that's where I can't go. So interesting. Yes, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nathan. Yeah. We will get to him for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, I, like I said, I was like running behind. So I'm going to grab a um, streaming or an ambiance mm -hmm. um, and We'll do, let's do a long one. We can go to the hour since we're at 420 or it's not, we're at the 20 yard. I know it's 420 for me. Um, oh, 420. That's funny. Um, <laughs> um, but let's go to the hour. That'll give us um, 40 minutes, not 50 minutes, 40 minutes. Can you guys tell where my brain is? <laughs> okay. Um, don't worry. Don't like mind me. I'm just going to get a, a, a thing up. So. We will see you guys at the hour mark. Yeah. <laughs>
Hello. Hello. That flew by, didn't it? It did. That was a very quick 40 minutes. <laughs> and when I'm focusing on work, I like time just is gone. It's like the day just goes by. So but I was listening to this. Oh my gosh. It is like giving me the creeps, man. This one. It's so creepy. Like so they're like trying, they're gonna try to kill each other's, you know, whatever the person mm -hmm. do. But like they see this person like everywhere. So it's like and the way that the narrator is like describing them is just freaking me out. <laughs> I love serial killer um like thrillers. Like I love it. Mm -hmm. I think it's super fascinating. But like, oh my gosh, it's just kind of giving me the little ugh, heebie jeebies. So <laughs> are you getting the heebie jeebies still with yours? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in the book this young couple they're like happily married well the husband you know and so now the wife is trying it's like three months later and she's trying to you know sit with her grief and move on and everything well he bought her before he passed he bought her this cabin in the middle of the woods and it's a cabin that yeah. she's 
she's loved for years and they're very like fascinated with morbid things. So like they love Halloween, they love slasher movies. Yeah. And she loved this cabin because the surrounding woods, there have been, you know, crimes committed there. Oh, and she's okay. like, Ooh, maybe it's haunted. And so before he passed, he actually bought it for her for her birthday. And when her birthday came around, his mom had sent her like the card that he had wanted sent for her. So she moves out there and like, there's all these like shadows and noises and I'm just like, oh my, and she's fascinated by it. But she's she also, all excited and you're like, what are you yes, doing? But she's oh. also kind of like, wait, am I just going crazy? Cause like I'm in, in grief and everything. And I'm just yeah. like, oh my goodness. I could never like, yeah. that's the worst time for you to do that because even yeah. in, it's actually in this book too, this girl, this woman got attacked. And so she has mm-hmm. PTSD from the attack yeah. and it, like, she starts to see the guy everywhere. And it's like your brain when you're in grief is like, mm-hmm. puts things in like, I don't know. It's just not a smart idea to yeah. go live on your own in the forest <laughs> where crimes have been committed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine how creepy that is, but. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad we're liking, but at least we're both liking it. Um, yeah. yeah. I, if, if something makes me feel a certain way that it's done its job. Yeah. Um, so if it's making me feel creeped out, then I'm, I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> oh, let me, sorry if you can hear my um, child. Let me message my husband really quick. He's calling me. Um, um, sorry. I, so my father-in-law got into an accident last night. Oh, no. Um, yeah. And he's a truck driver. And I guess in the middle of the night he was driving, he like drives the West coast route. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there was a car, like an abandoned car sticking out on the freeway and he didn't see it. It was like 3 AM and he didn't see it. Oh, wow. And his truck his semi hit the car. Mm -hmm. Thankfully no one was in it, but it, it forced him to like go off to the side of the road. And so um, he's okay, but he may have broken his foot. Um, Yeah. So my um, husband is going driving up to go pick him up from Mm -hmm. where it was. So he's kind of, he's going to Sacramento, which is from my house is like three hours. So he just called me right now. I told him, I'll call him back in just a second. <laughs> I was like, I know he's probably going to call me, but um, anyways. Um, yeah, it was just kind of crazy that happened, but um, hopefully everything is okay. It's just kind of yeah. scary, you know? Um, but um, I want to know, besides what you guys got done on that sprint, um, I always want to know, every month I want to ask this, is did you guys read any other good thrillers? in March because I read a few that I wanted to chat about. So um, did you read any Elise? I don't remember. I was just looking at my Goodreads and I'm going to pull it up because um, I didn't rate a lot of them highly, but I actually find found them very intriguing and I want to talk about them. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I only read three other thrillers um, and I'm in the middle of one. So let's, let me pull it up really quick, but y'all in the comments, let me know if you read any other thrillers. I'm always in the, on the lookout for thrillers. Yeah. It looks like um, no one can know is the only like true thriller that I read this month. Okay. Although I did read Gothicana by Rue Nix, which was my first okay. five star of the year. I'm so ecstatic. Um, oh, that is a dark romance, mm-hmm. but it's also like a fantasy thriller. So there's thriller aspects to it. Oh, okay. Because it's because it's yeah, like sus- romance, romantic suspense, right? Kind of. Yeah, like gothic there's, suspense. There's like people that disappear, and oh, okay. so there's like a whole mystery behind it. And there was even oh, like cool. a twist at one point. So it had all the things. It was it was pretty okay. Awesome. Okay, cool. Did you listen to the audio or did you physically read it? Okay. Both. both. I okay. Yep, I have the book physically and that's like my favorite way to do it is to just sit, hold the book and read along as I'm yeah. listening to the audio. The Same. only thing though is that the book I got after it was traditionally published, the audio, mm-hmm. 
I think is based off of the KU version. So there were a couple different changes. Yeah. Whoa, Nothing okay. major. I was able to follow along still, but. Okay. Cool. I actually have only seen one other person ever read that book. Um, really? And so I've seen it everywhere, mm -hmm. but I've never seen any more reviews of it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh, I wonder if people actually like it. And oh, now wow. it has like, it has like sprayed purple edges. Mm -hmm. Like so pretty. If you guys haven't seen that one, it's, I saw it at Barnes and there is like the prettiest cover with those purple edges. So yep. I love that. Did you get a physical copy or are you just not gonna? No. Yeah. I, I have. Oh yeah. You have it. Yeah. Cause yeah. you said you were reading it physically. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I love that for you. I love when you can find a good, um, like, it's kind of like a little surprise that it's going to be mm -hmm. a favorite, you know? Yeah. I love that. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. Let me see. Let's share this tab really quick. I'm going to show you guys. Okay. Um, so I read, um, <laughs> it's like that's whoa, so <laughs> I know. There we go. I read, listen for the lie. Um, mm -hmm. and that one I got alongside of this one for book of the month mm -hmm. and I really liked it. Um, if you, um, Kindle was, had told me she was reading the arc of it and she's like, you're really going to like this one. It's going to be really mm -hmm. fun for you. And um, it's got a podcast element where mm -hmm. this these two best friends are go to a wedding in their small town in Texas, and I'm from Texas. And um, it, there's a cold case where one night the 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 friend that is alive is found walking on the side of the road, mm -hmm. bloody, and their her best friend was murdered and they think she did it but no one could pin it on her and stuff mm -hmm. like that so there's like a, a podcaster who's trying to figure it out and like he comes to texas and she comes back to texas for her grandma's birthday party and it's this whole thing and it's really really good i really liked it um i've read many books with the same premise but i think the mm -hmm. podcast element definitely added to it so yeah that one was good i gave it four stars um but a lot of people i think I want to say Kindle might have given it five stars. A lot of people would probably give it. Y'all have to like add a star to all of my thriller ratings <laughs> because I don't rate thrillers high unless the writing is incredible. Yeah. So yeah. So that one was fun. And that one just became book of the month. And then obviously no one can know. I haven't rated that one yet, but I also read, you'll never know I'm here. And this just came out in last December. And that mm -hmm. is um, Kirsten Modlin, And she is a popcorn thriller writer. Mm -hmm. It's basically her and Frida McFadden. They write popcorn thrillers. And you'll see, you see, I, re I read The Inmate by Frida McFadden too. And I gave both of them three stars. But I really feel like some people would give You'll Never Know I'm Here five stars. Okay. Um, it has it has the craziest. Okay, it's an isolated thriller, so it's perfect for our, our readathon. Mm -hmm. Basically, all of these bookstagram influencers go to a little house in the middle of nowhere <laughs> for the first time and they meet up and it gets wild. Like oh, it gets, wow. and it's a fast read. It's really interesting. Like it hits so close to home. Mm -hmm. I was like, I had the same feelings of like when I met up with like Liv and all of them. And I was like, <laughs> this is so weird, but like it goes off the rails. Um, Ooh, that sounds so yeah. Good. So yeah. And it was a super fast read, like maybe five hours tops audio. Mm -hmm. So I like read it in like a couple of hours. Okay. Um, yeah, so that one was good. And then The Inmate was really good. Um, it's about a woman who, she is a nurse. She becomes a nurse. She gets a job for a nurse. Um, or a, um, is it Rikers Prison? Is that what it's called? In By near New York. Um, Long like, like, we know where Long Island and the, the big prison is out there. She goes to a small town out there and mm -hmm. um, um, becomes the nurse for the prisoners at the, mm -hmm. at the um, prison. And so a guy who she thought tried to kill her, who was her ex-boyfriend in high school mm -hmm. is there. And she, and it goes from there and it's mm -hmm. crazy. Like she has to take care of him. And then, yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. And I really like that one too, but I've read, again, I've read a lot of books <laughs> like it. So I, I don't like, I always rate the first ones I read that are very similar higher mm -hmm. than the second ones or the third ones. Yeah. Um, but I think people will really love that one. It's just came out, I think physically mm -hmm. um, in stores and stuff too. So 
those two are great popcorn thrillers. And obviously I read Spark of the Everflame, which was great too. So <laughs> but that's not a thriller. Um, I didn't read very much this month because I was so busy. Um, so yeah, I think I'll probably have this one under my belt and then Glow of the Everflame maybe. I think, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, but that's okay. Cause I am really busy right now. <laughs> was so. You'll Never Know I'm Here. Was that on Everand? Yes. Okay. And also was it was on Spotify if people have Spotify. So oh. yeah, all of her books are on hers and here's some modules and Freedom McFadden, except for like the very newest release. Mm -hmm. They're usually all on Everand. So yeah, I read both of those on Everand. Um, but I also like to read those on Spotify because you only get 15 hours on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And so those ones are so short. I can get like four or five of that, of mm -hmm. her, their author. Um, read on there so anyways those are what i read let's get rid of this now but um i think my favorite was definitely um here, uh, listen for the lie for okay. sure but just the twist of you'll never know i'm here was just like bonkers i was like is this really what i'm reading about right now you know when those things are like it was you know uh because i know you read um the one black sheet and uh -huh. you're like, is this what I'm reading about right now? <laughs> it's kind of had that moment for me, but not as crazy. You know what I'm okay. saying? Yeah, it was, but it was very um, timely about what's going on in the world right now. So okay. um, yeah, it was really interesting. Um, but what else did you guys do? Oh, Heather was telling us about when the moon hatch. <laughs> I need to write a dissertation. The story is amazing, but the world is the most immersive and fleshed out fantasy I've ever read. That's what Rachel said too. So I'm very interested in how that is. Cause I love, um, I don't mind a dense fantasy. I mm -hmm. actually love being in a world. Like I love Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So if I can read Game of Thrones, I can read anything, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so yeah. Is that something that you might read? I might read, I don't know. It's on my, it's on my TBR. Yeah, after I, because I heard her talk about it before I heard Rachel talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so Rachel just kind of like reiterated. I'm just like, yeah. okay, yes, I will definitely yeah. read this. <laughs> I love that. I love it. And it's oh, dragons. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. Took me 11 days to read, but seven of those days I was in production week, so I didn't get to read. Yeah. Oh, you were doing um, Moana, right? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. I read the last 32% last night. It's dense, but you figured out as you go. Okay, cool. Well, that makes me so excited. I love that. You are you push it up my TBR. It was already pretty high on my TBR, but I'm excited. Didn't get much reading then. Ate dinner and talked to my mom. That still sounds delicious and fun. Yeah, it was a scary accident. I know. I just, I don't know. We'll see. I'm just worried that he's going to be out of work for a while, mm -hmm. you know, but it could have been way worse. So, yeah. yeah. I, him driving terrifies me so much. So, my my grandfather was also a truck driver, a long haul truck driver. So, yeah, oh, it's terrifying. Oh, you finally read the Fury this month. You should go back and watch our um, the discussion that I did last month because that was a good book. I really loved that one. That one was good. Hello, Natalie. Finished dinner, then going for a walk after I plan on reading Ruthless Styles. Oh, yeah. I loved that one. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I haven't read that one yet. Did you read Divine Rivals though? Yeah. Yeah. I say, I know why a lot of people were disappointed with Rusa's Vows, but I just love the romance and the character so much that it really didn't bother me that it, it focused a lot on like the gods and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, people were upset that it was so much about the mythology and I was like, that's still interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I liked it. Oh, sorry. Um, just finished Another Missing Person and really enjoyed it. Okay, I read the other book by this author, um, the one where she goes back in time after she sees her husband or her son murder um, somebody. Oh, I can't even think of the name of it. You know what I I'm talking about? It. Yeah, it's got like orange and red on the cover. Yeah, yeah, I did read that one and I liked it. It was good. Mm -hmm. um, but I did see this at my library and I should have picked it up. But I love British thrillers. Like, give me a thriller set in with a British accent and I'm great. You know, it's wonderful. <laughs> Not many thrillers this month. I did start the Windy City series. Oh, everybody's been talking about that one too. Yeah. I try to read one romance series at a time because I don't read them very often. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the middle of Chestnut Springs right now. So I'm just sticking with that one until 
um, her, and then she has another book coming out um, right after right in April. So I'm like, I'll be on Elsie Silver for a while, but I am interested in the Windy City series. So read one by one. Okay, that one's another isolated one, right? They're out in the middle of the woods. I might have to add that one as an option for um, my TBR because I'm just going through all of her backlist. Mm -hmm. So we were we talked about we've read you've read quite a few Frieda McFadden's too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. I feel I, you read that one. No, not one by one. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the ones that I really want to read. And that, that one was one of them. So I've read most of them, like, honestly, but I I'd probably read the wife upstairs, even though it's probably a Jane Eyre retelling, but you know, we'll see, but I'm glad that you liked that one. You reminded me that I need to get that one read. If you like serial killers with, but with female main characters, the change was so, so good. Is that the one with like, aren't they witches or something? Or That's the one I'm thinking you're talking about. Yeah. I think I know. Is that purple cover or yeah. blue cover? Am I, I don't I'm know. Um, yes. Kristen Miller. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that this was about serial killers. Well, yeah. if that's the right one, Shauna, then I will be adding it to my list. Maybe we'll do serial killers as a prompt for next, next, because I plan to do it in September. I think that'll be really fun to do another mm -hmm. no body, no crime. Like maybe you do it twice a year because they're just like weekend readathons. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that would be fun. Yeah, that one was really good. If you like a podcast element, it's really good. Um, yeah, it also had like some romance in it, which is good. So it's got a little bit of everything. Um, and it's small town in Texas. I just felt like I was there. I was like, this is my old, old town in Texas. <laughs> it was, it was good. Yes. The next one is a really good one too. Yes. That one is hard to read though too. So it's sad, but yeah, I liked that one a lot. I didn't like her other one. I read the escape room by her and I didn't like that one. Mm -hmm. um, it's not what I thought it was. Like it was more business. I don't know. I just didn't love it, but mm -hmm. my book club read insomnia. By Sarah Pimborough. Oh, okay. I saw that going around a couple of years ago. Yeah. I have, I've only read, um, what was it that she's, what did she Eyes, write? like eyes. Yes. And I DNF that one because yeah. I got spoiled for it. And I was like, I oh. it told me what it was about. So. <laughs> but I should watch the movie because the movie looks good. So, mm -hmm. or is it a TV series? I don't know. Um, I don't remember actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I just watched a TV series on Netflix. That was a thriller. Oh gosh. I'm gonna have to go back on Netflix and see what it's called. Um, but it was based off of James Patterson thriller. Um, oh. no, not James Patterson. What's the other guy? Harlan Coben who oh. writes all of those other ones. Um, and it was so good. I'm going to have to go and on the next sprint, I'll check and see what it's called. And then I'll let you guys know if you're into watching thrill. Cause it's hard to find good mini series that mm -hmm. are thrillers that are based off of books. Mm -hmm. And this, and apparently Netflix has a lot of Harlan Coben's thrillers. Um, mm. I think the next one I want to watch is the stranger. Um, but Elizabeth watched, what is it called? I'll, I'll figure it out and I'll tell you guys. And I watched it in one day and it was really good. Um, yeah. I think you would guys would like that if you, I mean, we're a thriller book club, so we might as well watch those ones too. So. <laughs> um, if you like British mysteries, how to solve your own murder. I read that one last month. I have that on my TBR. I don't have a copy, but um, that one looks so funny. It's like where the mom, the grandma knew she was going to get murdered and they have to go back and figure that one out. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Um, it's a new one. Yeah, it's a new one that's coming out on the 26th. Is that tomorrow? Yep. Yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Okay, it's British. I love it. It's giving Downton Abbey. <laughs> it's giving Knives <laughs> Out. <laughs> um, I will definitely read that. Okay, cool. I love that. Awesome. The change is about three main characters end up in each other's lives and they have to stop a serial killer in the area. Shauna, thank you for this. One. I guess. Clarify for us if that's the same one that I showed you, yeah. by Kristen Miller. 
because I don't see any other ones. And I know we, I know you said it was about witches. And I remember someone saying there was like witchcraft in. Yeah. Or like they had, they have power. I haven't read it. I have it, but they have powers or powers are awakened in them or something. I could have sworn that was that one. I could be wrong though. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's the right one. Awesome. Cause the, um, Trio of women discover a teenage body whose body, girl who was body was abandoned beside a, a remote beach. Okay. So I guess these three women like come together or something. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, I didn't know that was like, had like um, thriller vibes. I love that. Um, well, uh, I was, this is why I'm like, we find these thrillers that we never would have gotten before. So I love it. Okay. Let's go. Um, Let's go to the 10 mark and then we'll get a little bit longer one in so we can get some more done. Um, And then when we come back, we'll chat. I came up with a few questions, more general questions. (laughs) Hopefully uh, things will rattle around in our brain and we'll remember. So, (laughs) okay. We'll see you guys at the 10.
I just realized we were supposed to come back at the 10 mark, but it's okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm all over the place today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> that was a little shorter than we thought, but <laughs> how did it go? Good. This yeah. book is, yeah. It's like, it's not the best written thing. Mm hmm but I'm so intrigued. I'm like, okay, okay, this is weird. This is spooky. Where's it going? I'm going to re I'm going to add it. As soon as I see what your rating is, I'm going to add it to my TBR for sure. I love something like that, but again, mm -hmm. I'll probably read it in the middle of the day. So I won't be too scared. I read horror, but like comedic horror, you know, yeah. like spoof kind of horror. Yeah. So, but I'm going to put it on my, um, radar right now i remember i remember looking at this cover and being like that doesn't look like it looks like a fantasy there are some fantasy aspects to it okay okay yeah. interesting yeah it's such an interesting cover mm -hmm. awesome well i'm glad we're both really liking what we're reading because yeah. i'm really liking mine too and i am so stressed out <laughs> <laughs> like there's so many like crazy things going down and I'm just mm -hmm. like it's kind of all, all on page so like it's telling you exactly how people are murdering people and I'm just like Ooh. oh okay <laughs> um but yeah I kind of expected that like it's a little grittier than I am used to mm -hmm. but I you know I still am so intrigued and I'm like there's different stories like there's got this whole stranger on the train Mm -hmm. set up right where these two women are helping each other and then there's this totally other storyline um with a another serial killer and i'm like how is that one gonna connect or is mm -hmm. it the same serial killer i'm like what's happening so i'm kind of like how are how are these gonna connect so yeah. i am just like you said so intrigued to know exactly what's going on so yeah I don't know. I have a lot of stuff to do tonight. So um and I'm gonna be waiting for my husband to, to come home from his travels today. So I'll probably try to finish it tonight. Um, we'll see. Um, because you know, it's still early over here. It's only six o'clock over here. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we still have um some daylight still. So um yeah, you guys let us know if you um had a successful sprint. I sorry that I came back too early, but you know, things happen. I, my brain is not working really well. Oh, and I have the perfect bookmark corner, my <laughs> Evermore corner. Um, I, I think I might do a couple of giveaways with um, some of my Evermore stuff for the readathon. Oh, so nice. if you guys want to do 
want um, to enter that'll be part of the Ruthon. Um, but alrighty, uh, let's do a little short recap in chat about no one can know. I we're just this doesn't have to be super in depth because I can't remember anything. But <laughs> from what I do remember, my initial thoughts, I really didn't like it. <laughs> So I want to know your initial thoughts. Like when you finished it, what did you think? Were you happy with it? What did you, what was your like initial rating right away? So honestly, when I started the book, I was really liking it okay. a lot. Uh -huh. And then after a certain point where I felt like the, the story was just completely changing from what I was expecting or what I thought it was leading up to, then yeah. it started to tank. So like, I didn't give it a terrible rating, but I did not enjoy it as much as I initially thought I was going to. So I had similar thoughts. Um, I liked the story. I, you know, I always like um, going back to a small town and there's like a history and there's a murder. And I love when there's like family dynamics and mm -hmm. stuff. So I think I did like a lot of it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but I... I really did not like the way it ended. So yeah. I, <laughs> it started to feel, okay. So I've read, have you read, you haven't read What Lies in the Woods, right? No, this is my first Kate Alice. Michael. Okay. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I don't know. It was like a different person wrote it because really? if you read What Lies in the Woods, do you, um, it, the writing was so good. The writing mm -hmm. like left me, kind of speechless sometimes and I was like wow this is great writing did mm -hmm. you feel that way in this like where there was like moments where you were like oh my gosh the writing's so good I didn't feel that way with this one in the beginning I kind of did because okay. I, think I started reading it um during our first sprint for this okay and I did kind of pick up because you had mentioned that oh mm -hmm. the writing is so good and I did pick up on that but mm -hmm. I think I don't know if I didn't notice it as much towards the end because I wasn't enjoying the story or if it yeah. did kind of go downhill. I don't know, but. Yeah. You know, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by what, what lies in the woods though, because okay. um, she kind of reminded me of Alice Feeney where Alice Feeney would write, writes a lot of like, um, she, I think Alice Feeney overwrites, mm -hmm. but um, where she writes a lot of thought, thought-provoking lines and you're like wow that was good um I, I I do think Alice does a little bit too much sometimes I'm like girl like Daisy Darker I was like please stop but even though I love Daisy Darker but um Kate Alice Marshall and What Lies in the Woods I was like wow this is great like there are so many moments where it was just like I had to like stop and like rewind I'm like wow that was a really good line and I wish I had the book alongside me because I was working when I was reading it and I didn't mark up all the quotes but I think it's one that I'll go back and read and okay. I rarely give thrillers five stars and I gave what lies in the woods five stars like yeah. I can name a handful of thrillers I read last year that I gave five stars and I read a hundred <laughs> so um yeah so I was just a little bit let down there are but I did like how she left off a lot of the past scenes she left mm -hmm. off like really good one-liners mm -hmm. and I was like oh that's really cool what was like when she was going, when the, when the sisters were dealing with like a lot of abuse from their parents, mm -hmm. um, she would leave it off on a really like sad, but poignant, like note, like something like, um, she tried to breathe. Remember when she was doing that, had the asthma attack and, yeah. or it was, it ended up being anxiety, but she thought it was asthma and she was like, um, and she tried to breathe. And that was, there was like a line at the very end where she just, she just kept trying to breathe. And I was like, wow, that was really like like impactful and stuff so yeah there were some really good lines but I just didn't feel like it was the same person that I I read from before you know what I mean you're like wait what this is not the same writing but yeah the, the writing wasn't bad it was mm -hmm. just not as distinctive as the first book that I read by her so yeah. anyways um what else did you guys what did you guys think of um your first thoughts about it um my my mind might change I don't think it will but my mind <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I did like the journey. I think I liked, like you said, I liked the journey of it. And 
but I did. I think I'm my initial rating is going to be a three star, which is not bad, mm -hmm. you know. So we'll see. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Oh, uh, Kendall popped in. Hi. She's doing um, Patreon reading sprints right now. <laughs> yeah. So hello. She's probably gone. Hi, Danny. Hello. Hello. Elizabeth was like, I'm going to join the discussion, even though she didn't read all of it. She had to DNF it. Oh, because yeah. Of the child abuse and stuff. She's like, I just can't read this. Um, and so I told her, I was like, right when you stop, I think it kind of stops. Like, but mm -hmm. yeah, I totally understand why. Um, but I was trying to explain to her the ending. She's like, just spoil the ending for me. And we'll get to that. I can't explain the ending. And I hope that someone else can sum up really what happened in the end. Because, you know, like there were so many different, like, I don't know. It was like such an unreliable narrator at the ending. And you're like, wait, we didn't really figure out what actually happened to their parents. I, I thought we did. Cause like somebody actually posted in their stories, like, um, like, can you jog my memory type thing? And so I yeah. responded to her and I was like, I'm not a hundred percent on everything, but like, this is yeah. kind of what I remember. And I told her, she's like, Oh yeah, that kind of sounds familiar. So like, I yeah. know. And okay. if what I'm thinking is what actually happened, we did kind of get an answer. So we're going to be in spoilery, you guys. So if you've read, haven't read this, don't even stay here unless you want to um, and you don't have any plans to read it. But like the sister. Mm -hmm. So by the time, by the ending, it was like there was a moment where they were like, we can't even remember what happened because mm -hmm. They all kind of recollected it differently and they couldn't really figure out what's happening. So I don't know. Let's we'll keep going and then maybe y'all can explain exactly what happened at the end. For me. Nathan was on my nerves the entire time. He was so controlling and he was so gaslighting her like mm -hmm. and telling her like, well, wh I don't know. Did you do it? And like all this different stuff. And I'm just like, uh, like, why are you asking your wife if you she did this thing? Like, I don't know. He, he was, was pretty. He was pretty awful. And when he died, I was like, yes, yes. like amazing. And so basically, wasn't it Daphne that killed him or is it not Juliet? Cause JJ. No, no, I thought it was the cop guy or something. Daphne. She, she, um, I think she admitted to it at the end. Did she So that? That part's a little fuzzy. She said, I had to do it for my sister because he wasn't good enough for her. That's okay. what she said. Yeah. Right. Okay. Y'all just confirm with me. <laughs> yes. Um, but who read I remember recently. that line. I remember that moment where I was just, she, she did it for him. Yeah. Ended up giving it four and 4.5. Okay. Shauna, tell us what happened at the end. <laughs> and I'm glad that you liked it. A lot of the book and the original investigation would have been so different. The sisters had talked more, but their family dynamic was weird and dysfunctional. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like, I understand weird family dynamics because I'm not super close with one of my siblings. Um, and it's like, if you would just have talked to each other, you probably, you could get things worked out. Yeah. Um, but they were all going through their own abuse mm -hmm. and it was just so hard for them to like, I don't know, figure out like they, they all were kind of protecting each other. So they didn't want to like bring the other one into it and stuff. Yeah. It was really crazy. And it, you're right. Like if, if the sisters had communicated, it would have been a lot more, a lot smoother. They would have figured out what happened. But see, that's the thing. At the end, they were all explaining it. And there was like three different stories at the end mm -hmm. that are solutions or re resolutions. And I was like, okay, well, which one is real? So right. I don't know. Ended up with four stars. Okay. Awesome. Two and a half for me. Convoluted is the right word. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think by the end, she was just trying to do too much. Okay. Yes. I, I just don't remember. Maybe I should read it, but yeah, crazy. It was convoluted. I was a bit checked out. Oh wait. I was out for a bit doing book club discussion with, with Jess. Oh, okay. Awesome. She's doing her book, book club discussion too. Gave it four stars. Love that. Okay. Shauna, definitely read that one. Julie, I'm glad you liked it. You guys take everything I say with a grain of salt because I read way too many thrillers and I'm very jaded and I, I, 
I'm like, this is done a million, this has been overdone. Um, but I will be still reading more that she reads, she writes for sure. And I do, do, do recommend What Lies in the Woods. So it was kind of obvious with the sisters. Okay. Yeah. She DNF'd it, but still want to know what everyone thinks. Yeah. That's what she did. Yeah, for sure. I know. I was trying to tell her the end. See, we thought Daphne killed their parents. They blamed it on the cop, but it was really her. But then she was like, maybe I didn't. She didn't remember if she did or not. No, Juliet, I thought. Ah, see. See, I thought, like, <laughs> what I, like, can I talk about that part? Yeah. Go. Yeah, go for okay. it. So what I kind of recalled, and maybe this was just part of what they made up in the story, but this is what I am, like, remembering, was, like, the cop guy was friends with the dad somehow. Yes. But he killed right. him. Because he was in love and having an affair with the mom. Okay. And then the mom found the dad, and I thought she killed herself. Okay. That's so that, that was one version. That was okay. one version. And then a couple of chapters later, um, Daphne was like, no, I did it. <laughs> Like, wait, what? And then they were like, oh no, the cop did it. I don't know. Like, I'm so the, confused now. <laughs> that's exactly why I was so confused too. So I don't know. Yes. I, I do okay. remember her ad admitting that she did kill him. Um, obviously in the way that the younger sister totally killed Nathan. Yeah. Well, she was stalking her sister. She was like watching yeah. her while she was sleeping and stuff. Um, when she, when her character was first introduced. I'm like, this girl's wackadoo. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was like, she's got to be <laughs> something going on. Yeah. Even if she admitted to killing her parents, he was disposed to be put on the stand. He could plead the fifth. Uh, if he was deposed. Um, who, I'm trying to remember if the cop was. I'm not sure. Oh, even if, or if Nathan was put on the stand, he could have pleaded the fifth if she admitted it to her, um, to Nathan, I guess. Is what oh, she said. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're married. Okay. yeah. I think it was Daphne. See, <laughs> this is so funny. Like, we're like, I think it was them. Um, and then JJ, remember, had kept having those flashbacks. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I remember having something in my hand, but I don't, like, she could not remember. So it was mm -hmm. just kind of interesting. Daphne gets caught in the carriage house by Nathan, so she kills him because she wanted to anyways. Yeah, I, I, I remember that. Yeah. And the physical, made, that made it better for me. Yeah. I do know, but that's the problem. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, see? Okay. <laughs> I honestly have no idea what happened at the end, but I think the creepy sister, sister killed everyone, but somehow the other sister was totally comfortable just leaving her child alone with her. Oh yeah, I mean, oh, it's like kind of like uh, you you can't hurt my sister, only I can kind of thing. I don't know. It's yeah. just like Daphne had blood all over PJs. Juliet starts to think she did it, but it wasn't her. She was just out of her mind on drugs and trauma. Yeah, because she was really high, mm -hmm. and see that's why she didn't remember. She was the unreliable narrator. So I was like, okay, so was it the truth or not? So maybe Kate Alice Marshall did it on purpose. So it's kind of like we all just had our own conclusions. You never know. I mean, that could have been the end. But Emma's the only sister insists the entire time she didn't kill their parents. Yeah. But then even she seemed like she was unsure. She's yeah. like, <laughs> exactly. I don't think I did it. <laughs> this is going to have to be a rereader for me sometime. Yeah. If no one can know, maybe the readers can't know about it. That's a good call. There you go. It's kind of like, Betty, it's kind of like the one, uh, Lisa Jewell one, none of us is true. Mm. Is any of the book true? <laughs> no one can know that's an amazing thing well they also did say no one can know to each other so that was probably part of the title too but that is yeah. so smart yes if they yes we figured that out <laughs> <laughs> as a cop and the mom did it as well yeah yeah your guess is as good as mine <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Okay. Um, I already asked, but did you guys like the writing? Do you remember anything that stood out to you? I know um, you don't have your book with you. Um, but like I said, those flashback moments, she did have some really good moment, like moments in there. But like, I couldn't really remember anything like super reliable. I mean, it just kind of felt very generic for me. I don't know mm -hmm. why. Maybe I just, because the, the sister's, 
I love a backstory. I love the flashbacks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we only got a little bit of the flashbacks. Like we only got like the abuse that they had, like Mm -hmm. nothing else besides that. But what do you think? I, those were honestly my favorite part were the flashbacks because I just felt so immersed in those scenes and it was almost kind of to go back to the, the present. I kind of wanted to stay in the, in the back, in the past too. Not, not that I wanted their, them to have any problems but or right. to go through that abuse but like it was more interesting to me yeah um so maybe if she had included a little bit more it would have been good but uh, yeah I really did like it mm-hmm. it was a lot of like I feel like it was a bit of like a showing or a telling instead of showing mm-hmm. um at the end like I don't know I just when I get told something I'm like no I just want it in dialogue I want it in like a scene you know mm-hmm. and that was a lot of the kind of reminded me of Sherry Lapina's books where she they why are you banging on the wall? <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I just wanted a little bit more. And I, I I, don't love it when people just tell me a story instead of being in, the, like, let us see the scenes, you know? Yeah. But the the back, the past ones, I feel like you did see that. <laughs> Say hello. Um, but, yeah, what did you guys think of the writing? Um, and I also thought, what did you guys think of the sisters, Emma, Julia, and Daphne? I honestly felt like Daphne was the only exciting one. Babe, come on, let's, let's start. (laughs) Um, I feel like Daphne was one of the, the, like, only ones I was really interested in. I don't know, Emma and JJ, I don't know. Maybe I'm just jaded because I felt like I didn't really know their personalities, but that Mm -hmm. was just me. I don't know. What did you think? I I liked JJ and I liked her whole story and how she, you know, the juxtaposition of how she was as a kid, you know, very prim and proper doing everything that she was expected to do. And then how she finally like came into her own and started living her true self as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like that she kind of just was like, okay, my name is going to be JJ now. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I like that. And um, but Daphne was really creepy. Yeah. <laughs> and then like Emma just kind of felt bland to me and it was just kind of like, I don't know. She just had a bad marriage and I don't know, but yeah. Um, what did you guys think of the characters? Um, <laughs> she's just like, <laughs> even Kate Alice Marshall doesn't know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so funny it was totally definitely that's my story and i'm sticking to it i i yeah i mean and then they ended up killing the cop because you know i don't know i just felt it was a little clunky at the end yeah, yeah. i think that's what it was but yeah i like unreliable narrators too if i'm in their head and they are talking like you know what i mean like if they if they twist it on me at the end and i'm like mm-hmm. oh the whole time it was you, you know, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. Anyone else think it's unconfirmed that Daphne is a sociopath or made that way because of the parents? I mean, I'm, I'm sure the trauma as a child yeah. had a lot to do with it. Yeah. Now was Daphne, I don't remember. She was the one that had the anxiety attack and her mom was like, just suck it up. And I'm like, oh my See, goodness. I thought it was actually asthma and her mom was just brushing it off. Like, oh, okay. get over it. It's just anxiety. It could have been. That's, that's yeah. Right. Okay. Then, yeah. She she didn't get as bad of the abuse as the older two, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So they I they got, they got it harder. Her was like seeing her big sisters being treated like that. And yeah. You know, Gosh. not being able to do anything about it. It's just so crazy. Like, I just can't imagine that, you know, mm-hmm. parents being that way. I just don't understand. Emma is way too loyal. Juliet was kind of bland. Daphne is unpredictable and possibly a serial killer. So interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're always the more interesting ones, you know? But like Emma and JJ could have just been the same person. I didn't feel much distinct. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Yes. Hi, Liv. She DNF'd it too, right around the same time because she didn't enjoy the um, abuse and stuff. But yeah, I, it's funny because K- <laughs> Liv is the one that was like, you need to read Kate Alice Marshall's YA stuff. And I was like, okay, I will. So um, I'm going to, I know she really liked Rules for Vanishing. So I definitely need to read that one. Um, but yeah, that's okay. I, 
it's not going to be one of my favorites, but that's okay. Other people really liked it. So I think it was interesting. JJ was interesting because it was a nice example of freedom from parents perfectionism. Yeah, that's totally, uh, gosh, I wish that um, they all could have felt that way. You know, who was Daphne's biological dad? What? In the house with the same eyes as her. Hmm. Was it the, was it the cop? I don't remember that part. That would make sense if he yeah. was having an affair with the mom. Yeah. I guess I didn't pick up on that. I got, yeah, me neither. Now that I think about it, I don't remember that part, but mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Um, we already talked about the ending, but <laughs> did you guys, I mean, I just really felt like it was just kind of a mess, but yeah. yeah. Did you guess all of the stuff that happened? No. <laughs> No, I I don't know. Like I said, the way everything was kind of set up in the beginning, I thought things were going to go a lot different. And yeah. it was like, I don't know, this whole huge thing, like one of them definitely did it. And yeah. the other like protecting, like, I don't know. I thought we were going to have a very clear, concise ending and an explanation yeah. for everything. So, yeah. No. no. <laughs> yeah. Even, I remember even in one of the things, um, they were like, she's like, oh yeah, I, JJ said, oh yeah, I did it. It was me. I was holding the gun. But I think Emma says, well, you don't remember. You're unreliable. Like mm -hmm. your memory is unreliable because of what you were going through. So like maybe it was supposed to be confusing, you know? And then, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm talking myself into a lower rating. <laughs> Oh, that's so bad. Um, I still check out Kate Alice Marshall's other stuff. I don't think the writing does. I think the plot just got away from her. I agree. Mm -hmm. I have read this. This is a question I was going to ask. I have read this plot a couple of times and one did it well and another did it bad. And so I'll explain that too. Um, but um, I just, I just don't think this one was the one, which is sad because, you know, when you pick a book club pick, you hope that it's going to be a good one, but yeah. I mean, I saw um, a lot of people in the chat did enjoy it. There's yeah. stars. So. Yeah. I know. I, I'm glad that you guys liked it a lot and I'd be interested to see if anybody else has read um, anything else by her. And if you felt like the writing was similar for me, the only thing else I've read by her is what lies in the woods. And I thought the writing was superb. So um yeah. And I don't, like you said, I don't think the writing was bad. I just think that the end got a little crazy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm definitely going to read any other ones that she comes out with. So she said it was a man who came by all the time was friends with her dad. She feared when their dad realized she didn't look like them. Well, the cop was friends with her dad. Interesting. Yeah. Shauna, I, that has left my brain. I don't remember that part. But okay, interesting. If anybody else knows, I don't know. I was creeped out at the end and I wouldn't trust either sister with my baby. Um, Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. That's crazy. I looked up some summaries. Daphne was a killer of everyone according to the others, the parents, Nathan, and the cop. Okay. Huh. We'll, we'll just say that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for looking that up for us. I was going to try to re-listen to it today, but I was like, I've got so much going on that I was just like, I can't really remember. Um, but thank you for looking it up. I wanted another show. I love writers like Gillian Flynn who throw twists in the end. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe the convolutedness was the twist. Like yeah. we were supposed to be like, we were supposed to be like, okay, well, this could have happened or this could have happened or this could have happened. <laughs> so yeah, I agree. I do. Um, Kylie, that leads me to another say that you like other twists this book reminded me so much of the only one left by Riley Sager because a lot of similar things happen, but um, there were just moments because basically in the only one left, this woman is supposed to have killed her whole family and um, a caretaker comes and tries to get the real story out of her. So, and it's in this secluded house, this rich mansion and there's a lot of secrets unfolding and I really felt like a lot of stuff that happened were very similar. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a million twists in that one. <laughs> so that 
the ending of that one, it was like twist after, like I had whiplash, there were so many twists in that one. So if you like something similar um, that I, you know, I gave a decent rating, then I would say the only one left. Um, Another one that I didn't love was um, Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina. Did you read that one yet? I DNF'd it. (laughs) Okay. It had the same premise and everything where they found the parents dead and there was three children and they were trying to figure out who it was. And I don't think that one was done very well. I think it was super obvious what happened. So, which this one was kind of obvious too, eventually, you know what I mean? Like you knew it was going to be a sister or whatever. And then she threw in the twist that it was the cop. And I just, you know, I don't know. So when there's not a lot of characters, you're like, this is so easy you know what I mean so um do you have any other books that you would recommend over this one or that reminds you of this one not really but I guess I didn't really put much thought into yeah yeah Um, I know I I just pick up on like oh that sounds exactly like that one (laughs) I mean I think the only one left that's a pretty good pull I'd say that's pretty similar and I actually I had similar not similar feelings in that the beginning was really good. And then it kind of tanked at the end. Like for me, the only one left was pretty, you know, good. consistent mm-hmm. all the way through, but yes. I still didn't rate it very highly. Same, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody else loves it. Like yeah. it's such a popular one. Um, but I'm not a fan of like twist after twist because when it was like, he threw the whole kitchen sink in the, in the ending. And I was just like, bro, like stop. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and I'm trying to think of, um, because the only one left reminded me of Verity and I thought Mm -hmm. Verity was done better. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So anyways, I say if you do like this plot, but you want it done a little creepier, a little, um, like with the, there was way more flashbacks. The only one left would have been good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one was really crazy. Oh, she said dysfunctional family murder and mayhem the family game was good that one was creepy because of, um that one was bonkers um yeah that oh my gosh there was um this added element of this recorded tape that she was listening to and it's the way it sounded it sounded like a serial killer talking to you it was really scary Ooh. so yeah i really liked that one but the ending again a little over top for me like she says it was crazy at the end so yeah that's another probably good one to um recommend the summaries on reddit also claim they thought this book was uber boring yeah i agree <laughs> um you're really interested in these fleeting shadows and the narrow um narrow her purposes always sound really good i will say i dnf'd these fleeting shadows because it made me feel really uncomfortable. Like, I don't know what it was, but it was like, I don't know. It just was too dark for me. I, it, it just cut, you know, when books get under your skin and not in a good way, yeah. like there's good books that like creep you out and freak you out. This one just got under my skin a little bit. So I don't know. Um, but the narrow I heard is like dark academia, right? I think yeah. it's a young adult, like horror thriller, dark academia. So I would be interested to read that one. Yeah, the family game was really good. Yeah, except the ending was a little, but um, love Riley Sager. But okay, Shauna, read that one. I think you'll really like that one. Oh, yeah, we were liars. I read that like a century ago, so I can't remember everything. Um, well off dysfunctional family, a bunch of secrets, but I like that one better. I really liked We Were Liars. That's an unpopular opinion. I feel like people hated that book, but I liked it. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what Liv tells me all the time. She's like, you really need to read that one. And it's like a creepy forest and this creepy road that you go down and maybe not come back. And it's just like, oh, okay. That sounds crazy. We realize it's being made into a show. I need to read the book. Oh yeah. Before someone spoils it for you, because there's a huge twist in that book and people always spoil that book for people. So I'm glad you haven't been spoiled. Um, But yeah, I read that one way back in the day and it's really good. And then they came up with like a sequel or something. So um, yeah, interesting. All righty. Well, if you guys think of any other ones that would remind you of it, um, I know I have a backlog of some other ones, but 
Sherry Lapina and Riley Sager, those are the two that really stuck out to me. Oh, Family of Liars. That's the like prequel to We Were Liars, the story behind everything at the before everything happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's see. Um, I just wanted to remind you guys that we're having our readathon next month. Does anybody have any final thoughts on the book? <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like it's a two star, (laughs) but I hate to say that about my own book club's book. I don't know, but I've rated worse for other books. Like, mm, what do you think your final rating is going to be? So the beginning I thought was definitely four stars. The end I felt was two. So I went with three. three. Yeah. I feel like, mm, I don't know. I'm the worst. Like I always like knock down stars because of, I don't know if I truly think about it. I just felt like it was sloppy at the end. And I was just Mm -hmm. like, this is like, it could have been, it could have been executed better. I just feel like, so yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Do it. Lower that rating. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Like I won't go lower than a two, which I mean, is a lot, but it's like 2.5. We'll stick with 2.5 because I do half stars. So, Um, but like I said, um, we have my readathon coming um, April 4th through the 7th. And if you want to join, go to Nobody No Crimes Book Club Instagram and there's templates on there. You can create your own and share it, tag me. Um, You can tag my book sleeve Instagram or um, Nobody No Crime, either one. Um, I will have a bunch of ladies on the sprints Friday and Saturday. It's going to be super fun. Um, do you have any idea of what you might read? Just like any books that on your radar? Cause there's a lot of new releases that are coming out in March and April. Oh, not really off the top of my head. I'm like really into fantasy right now. So like, yeah. I'm what are you reading? Fantasy. <laughs> yeah. You're reading that, that one for Elizabeth's, but what are you also you're reading fantasy wise? Um, I just started Trust of the Emerald Sea. Um, oh, I want to read that one. I yeah. So I jumped into it immediately after finishing The Women by Kristen Hanna. And oh, I just, okay. which was five stars. <laughs> okay. I, and, I just bought the Audible credit with Audible credit for that Oh, did one. you? Oh, yeah. Because so it's, Julia, it's Julia Whelan. I have yep. to listen to the audio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I don't know. I, I just, going from that to Trust, just completely different vibes and so i set it aside for now it's not a dnf i'm just like eh, i'm maybe yeah able to read it yeah but, and i'm in the middle of the throne of glass series and yeah did you did you have you got any farther no i'm still at, i started assassin's blade but i okay. didn't have the audio for it and i'm like I, and i've had the audio for the the first couple and i'm like oh i need to just wait till i get the audio yeah. for it so okay and if you need um the audio i do have all of them on audible so you can sign into mine if you want so well i think after when they stopped doing it on libby like mm-hmm. when they did only because a lot of them are only audible audible onlys mm-hmm. audiobooks and i think i have like queen of shadows and forward so okay. yeah um okay i just pulled up i have a highlight on nobody in a crime um the read for the readathon mm-hmm. um so we're doing isolated setting New release, favorite trope, and good for her revenge. Those are um, kind of the prompts. And you guys can, if they, if it fits, it fits. But or if you think it fits, don't worry about it. Because you're not going to know all of the tropes in the books. But um, one that I'm excited to read is the new Simone St. James, which is Murder Road. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited for that one. I'm reading and, that one. Yeah, you're reading that one right now? Yeah, I'm I'm oh. joining Gwen's podcast because her next podcast episode is talking about that. Oh, so, yeah, I kind of forgot I was reading it until you just mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of disappointed with her last one, the Darling Girl. Um, I was really disappointed with it because it it felt so underwhelming, and Wait, I don't that, think wasn't that Jennifer McMahon? Oh my gosh, I did that last time too. I mm-hmm. always mix them up. Okay. Yes, you're right. But I, I agree. I I read a couple, um, Simone St. James, and like the premises always sound so good. Right. Right. And then I'm always disappointed. Yeah. So, um, so far, I mean, this one, it's 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 going decently. I'm probably like a third of the way through it. I think. 
Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Liv started it too. She had the early copy and I'm like, okay, I need to get to it. Um, it didn't mm-hmm. just release. I think it did. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, and then in Michigan, which is where I'm at. So. Oh yeah. Awesome. And that's um, going to be for the favorite trope. I just love anything that like is set in a creepy, mm-hmm. you know, anything set in the car or anything like that. If there's anything like that, that's just a favorite trope for me. Um, mm-hmm. Isolated setting. I am going to be doing everyone on the train is a suspect. Mm-hmm. which is a sequel to everyone in my family has killed someone. Okay. So I'm excited for that one. Cause that one's supposed to be all set on a train. Um, so that's the isolated setting. And then for a new release, I'm going to be reading by baby, the Carol Corolla Levering one, um, mm-hmm. which I'm not sure a lot of people are going to like if I think it's about a kidnapped baby. So don't know if that's going to be for everybody. Um, and I did have good for her as my revenge this one for my revenge one. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I don't get to that one, I might read the collective, which is Ooh. that mother one that like yeah. is a revenge story too. So yeah. So I have a bunch of other ones that I might um, have possibilities, but if you're looking for prompts, I posted a ton of recommendations in my mm-hmm. stories. So check out that highlight. Um, yeah. There's so many recommendations in there. So Yay. Um, what, what is one of your favorite prompts? If you were to choose, what would you look for, for the TBR? I always like thrillers that have a bit of paranormal in them. Yeah. 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 Like, and Before Dark is probably my favorite. <laughs> oh, me too. One of my favorites by him for sure. Yeah. That's why I really like, um, House Across the Lake. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that. that's a good one. If you guys are looking for is it paranormal or is it not kind of thing? Um, I kind of base this whole, the whole readathon around um, what lies, not what lies, what am I saying? Um, House Across the Lake because of the mm-hmm. vibes. Like it just reminds me of No Body, No Crime. Yeah. So, yeah. Wasn't that um, like his thing at the very beginning of it? Yeah. It oh, it is right. Yeah. He wrote a little forward because mm-hmm. he's a Swifty. Uh, Riley Sager is a Swifty. That's probably why, like I immediately yeah. thought of that because he put that in there. Yeah. Um, but the whole premise. Book, sorry. Huh? Go ahead. What? <laughs> I was, was going to say the title of his next book is like lyrics from Taylor Swift. Oh, what is it? It's like in the middle of the night. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Middle of the night. Yeah, it's from Wildest Dreams. <laughs> yes, oh no, is it Wildest Dreams? I don't know. I that sounded right. I don't know. <laughs> Tress was so good, so sweet, but yeah. would for. Be with Bunch from the Women. Okay. It's very good. It. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm excited. I know. Elizabeth just gave it five stars too. So I'm just like, okay. I want to read Trust too. I heard it's like cozy princess bride fantasy. So um, I have read uh, Miss Born, but I haven't read anything else by him. So yeah. I'm curious what thriller suggestions people have in mind for good for her revenge prompts. Um, let me pull it up. What I have, um, the number one, that one that comes to mind is they never learn by Mm -hmm. Lane Fargo. That is the number one I would, um, recommend. Um, but good for her. What did I say? Oh, how to kill men and get away with it by Katie Brent. So happy for you. I'm trying to see if I can pull up this one. That was a good one. I liked that one. Yeah, it was so fun. Right. And then I have stone cold Fox. How I Kill You, Stillhouse Lake is amazing. Um, good for her. The Weight of Blood is total revenge. Mm-hmm. Pretty Things is kind of like a con artist. Good for her. And then They Love a Nerd. So these are the ones that I would recommend um, that I gave at least four stars to. So Happy for You, I would say, is the best one out of all of these. But I did give The Weight of Blood five stars, even though I gave So Happy for You four stars. But yeah, Pretty Things is a really good one. How to Kill, Ma- kill Men and Get Away With It was so good, too. But that one's a little heavy because that one deals with a lot of abuse. So um, another just- one that might be like a weird interpretation of mm-hmm. good for her would be cover story by Susan Rigetti. Oh, OK. I'm trying to think of the I know. OK, I'm going to look that one up really quick. Um, like, that yeah, was I feel like star for me, I loved it. <laughs> oh, I feel like good for her is like any kind of women empowerment, like kind of like any women's wrongs. <laughs> I don't know. Like that we're like, oh, whatever. Um, but cover story. Um, 
This one. Oh, I remember you talking about that one. This one. Yep. Okay, cool. That would probably be a good audio mm -hmm. to listen to. Okay, cool. I'm going to add that one. So there's another one for you guys. I love that. Okay. So annoyed they took the muffly, but yeah, they're audible only. The Sarah J. Mass is so annoying. Wow. But it's Elizabeth Evans, and I will have those audiobooks till I die. So they're worth it for me to have them on Audible because I'll re listen to them. You know what I mean? So um, I'm going to do a lot of mood reading. Um, old School April. What is Old School April? Is that like backlist or like older? I don't know. That's interesting. Read the clinic. Oh, yeah. Yes, I have that one too. Would that be isolated setting? Yeah, for okay. sure. I, I yeah. Um, Kendall's reading it, so you can ask her if it fits any. But I think it would probably. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like anything that's set in a location, like I might be read the new. You know the author that wrote um, Ace of Spades. Mm -hmm. She's right where good where girls were sleeping girls lie or something. Yes. And that's set at a boarding school. And I'm going to count that as um, isolated setting too. So mm -hmm. I feel like anything like that would be. Um, okay. Shauna, that is the only book that terrified the heck out of me by her. <laughs> it's so scary. And that one is like you said, you would really like that one because it's supernatural. Have you read that one yet by her? Yeah. Oh, that one terrified me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I remember scenes in that. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't. I think I read it at night too. So that's probably. Oh yeah. That doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. Pretty Things is really good. Janelle Brown. I love her, her books. Oh, interesting. That would be so awesome. Yeah. She's like a con artist. It was really good. I really, really like that one. Hmm. Retro books, anything over 20 years. There are ton of props and maybe a lot of good. Oh, goosebumps. How fun. <gasps> That will be really, really fun. I'm excited for you to do that. Yeah, I love that. Um, I read a ton of thrillers in April. Something about it, just like, it's my birthday month. So I'm like, what do I want to read? And all I want to read is thrillers. So one year I read only thrillers in April. Mm -hmm. And I think I read like 30 thrillers. I was like, oh, I'm in a dark place, you guys. <laughs> I need to get out of this and read some romance or something. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that's it. I know that the discussion wasn't super intense, but you know what? We're here for the vibes, right? We all read. <laughs> we liked it, kind of, I guess. <laughs> but um, I hope you guys join us um, for the readathon. We won't have a, a pick for next month because I have a lot of orders to do. <laughs> um, and I thought that the readathon would just be a fun way to kind of make it easy for us and stuff. So um, I think I think that's going to be it. We'll head out. Um, and I hope you guys have good rest of April. This is the last I have spring break. But you have spring break for the kids. Mm -hmm. huh? So hopefully, it's going to be a good week. Oh, I wanted to show you guys really quick before. Um, this is the um, if you're into watching thrillers, um, the um, let me see. He has a whole collection on um, Netflix. And the one that I read is Fool Me Once, this one right here, or watched. Basically, she is an ex-military, and she her husband dies, and she sees him shot in cold blood. Mm -hmm. And she goes to the funeral, she comes back, and she sees, it, sees her husband on the nanny cam like the next day what? and and since she's ex-military she's like really smart and really like intense mm -hmm. um and she has a little girl and it's really good it's really well shot it's a really pretty i don't know i really liked it so if you guys it's just a short limited series but it's good and then mm -hmm. all of these other ones are all based off of his books and i think i'm gonna read the stranger or watch this one next so yeah he has a bunch of them Same. he has you know he has so many books. Like, it's crazy how many books he has. So, yeah. But I just wanted to show you guys that one. So, Fool Me Once is the one I really liked. Um, and the ending would, like, blew my mind. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, thank you guys for joining. As of April 2023, it was attached to... Oh, so that's not too long ago. I mean, there was a big, you know... Um, writer's strike strike and everything so maybe it's coming back i feel like we're finally getting people back into work and do different things so 
Yeah. I would love to see her doing pretty things because that one was a really fun one. So yeah, this was fun. Thank you for helping us with the um, jogging our memories. Yeah. <laughs> Schedule yourself a vacation after all the Desi collection. I yes. girl summer will be like so much easier for me, but I cannot tell you that this Desi collection is coming at the perfect time for us. After the holidays, small businesses, we struggle a lot. And this is coming at a great time. Um, so, yeah. And Desi is just a dream to work with. She's such a sweet girl. Um, so, yeah. And she's about to post her spring book haul. And she's going to talk about the book sleeves in it. So you guys will see. Um, I'm just sad it took her a while to be able to get it. Because I was just, we were waiting for that fabric forever. So mm -hmm. it's okay. But, yeah. I will be taking a vacation for sure. And if you guys are still interested, you can go on my website and grab some Desi. I know Elise got her swan one. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, yeah. So, alrighty, you guys, thank you so much. Um, we'll see you soon and join us for a refund next week or next month. Well, it is next week. No, two weeks from now, two weekends from now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. April's almost here. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's the weekend. My girls, cause my girls have two weeks of spring break and, mm -hmm. um, it's the weekend they go back. So yeah, I know it's so fast. Um, but alrighty, we're gonna head out. So we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.